So you won. I did. In February of last year. Yes. Any money? No. Have you seen any money? No. Not a dime? No. Why not? I don't know. If customers get a raw deal from a business or a property owner is wronged, say, by a neighbor, you know, victims are supposed to be able to get justice when they sue in small claims court. But our Dan Tilken investigates why a local woman's case is a good example of the frustration that can come to victims even after they win their day in court. And it was August 2nd. And it was close to 100 degrees. More than a year and a half ago, Joetta Wallace was driving alone on Highway 26 between Warm Springs and Madras when her Chevy Trailblazer broke down. And I had no cell phone service, so I had to hitchhike. When she eventually got the Blazer towed to Madras, she was told the SUV's water pump she had recently repaired back home in Clark County at My Dad's Automotive on Highway 99 was broken. At first, they seemed pretty willing just to refund my money, and then they seemed to start backtracking. Joetta filed suit in small claims court and won. Judge Kelly Osler ordered my dad's automotive to pay her $1,200. They're refusing. They haven't paid me. Joetta hired a collection agency, but a year later, my dad's automotive still won't pay. Hey, Karen. So I called the owner. We'd like to come interview you about this and figure out uh, why you aren't paying and let you explain to the public. By phone, she refused to meet us for an interview. I even went to the business in person to ask, and she said no again. Over the phone, the owner disputed Judge Osler's qualifications. She's been hearing small claims cases for 14 years. The owner told me the judge didn't understand her letter detailing my dad's warranty policy, stating work has to be performed in our shop. She complained to me Joetta didn't even give us the opportunity to fix her vehicle. But the judge doesn't care about that. The judge wants you to pay her. Do you agree the judge didn't care about your explanation and you're still not willing to pay? That's correct. My dad's told me they won't give Joetta a dime unless she exhausts all four methods for a winning party to collect, which are similar in both Washington and Oregon. Hire a collection agency, garnish bank accounts, garnish wages, or put a lien on property. You've got somebody that's really good at, you know, pushing it off, hiding, deflecting. Uh, what happens is, you know, you end up spending a lot of time in the chase. Lawyer Scott Anders helps large companies retrieve debts. He's also a former judge who would decide small claims cases. He says expenses people like Joetta rack up while trying to collect can be added on to the judgment. But all the options left for her to try to get the money require taking the case back to court and probably hiring a lawyer. You usually have to find somebody that's willing to do it on a contingency you know, unless you've got you know, $10,000 to pay an attorney. And that's kind of the big question is how much good money do you throw after bad money potentially? Yeah. We think this will just help people smooth out the process. Lawmakers in Olympia are trying to streamline fees and eliminate some court filing steps for plaintiffs to collect small claims judgments. But the proposed bill still wouldn't remove the steps that my dad's automotive is telling Joetta she'll have to take. She doesn't want to pay you. I think I'm just going to have to take my loss and go from there. And give up what she's rightfully owed. Dan Tilkin, Coin 6 News. What a good story. Now, we checked with Oregon and Washington court systems, and investigators tell us that nobody actually tracks how many people actually get paid what they're owed after winning in small claims court. But if a losing party doesn't pay a small claims debt, it could show up on their credit report. Some counties offer mediation to keep those cases out of court. If you want to see the story again, or maybe you have another tip for our investigative team to look into, be sure to email us at investigators at coin.com, and you can always watch Dan's story again on coin.com.